how do we operate with this? Oops. This one here? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, good morning. My name is Isabel Sahinovic, and I'm a technical officer within the Global Vaccine Safety Team of WHO in Geneva. And today I will be presenting the Vaccine Safety Net. Yes. So, nowadays, what is our obvious reaction when we look for information? Internet. So, when people are in need of advice about topics like health, careers, or relationships, the first place they often look is the Internet. The same is true when parents and caregivers are looking for credible information about whether vaccines are safe for their children. However, finding that information often isn't easy. In recent years, a number of websites providing unbalanced, misleading, and alarming vaccine safety information have flourished, leading to undue fears among parents and patients. Acknowledging this issue and urged by governments and key stakeholders, WHO initiated in 2003 the Vaccine Safety Net project. The VSN is a worldwide network of websites evaluated by WHO that provide reliable information on vaccine safety. The mission of the VSN is to help internet users find trustworthy information on vaccine safety with a vision that reliable, understandable, evidence-based information on the safety of vaccines is available on the net and readily find by all. The two main goals of the VSN are to facilitate the access to science-based information to Internet users, regardless of their geographic location and language, and to collaborate at an international level to increase awareness about vaccines, reduce vaccine hesitancy, and strengthen confidence in vaccines. The VSN reports to the Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety an independent, authoritative, authoritative and scientific committee that advises WHO on vaccine safety issues of a global or regional concern that could impact national immunization programs. As illustrated on the map, the network comprises 56 websites around the world from 27 different countries and is providing information in 15 languages. It is estimated that more than 150 million users are accessing the network website every month. This map shows the geographical, sorry, the geographical and cultural diversity of the network. And this one uh, uh, illustrates the potential linguistic outreach of the network. Indeed, we think that uh, a connected population where there is no digital information on vaccine safety available in their country, will use keywords in their preferred language and access information from another part of the world where rumors and concerns are different or anti-vax movement more vocal. This is why it is important that national websites are strengthened to provide science-based information on vaccine safety that is tailored to the local population, adapted to the cultural environment, and in the local language. So practically, how do we do? Uh, websites, which are identified through direct inquiries from website managers, personnel working on the project or suggested by external parties, are evaluated for adherence to criteria for good information practices as defined by the GACs. Those criteria are split into three main categories. Two mandatory set of criteria against which the credibility of the site and the quantity and quality of the information will be assessed, and a desired criteria with regard to accessibility and design of the website. The same criteria are used to re-evaluate VSN members' websites. Government and academic websites are re-evaluated every two years, while private websites every year, in order to uh, verify their continuous compliance with the GACs criteria. When, when sites are considered by the evaluators to be satisfactorily meeting the criteria that are added to a list of reliable source of information accessible from the WHO website and from the VSN portal. 
corporate websites are not eligible for VSN membership. However, the listing of sites does not indicate endorsement by WHO of the site content. To assist candidates and members to comply with each criterion, a guide for implementing the criteria and a self-evaluation form have been developed. Also, to assist candidate websites willing to join the network but lacking information on vaccine safety, which is one of the mandatory criteria, an information package and a tailor-made strategy for incorporating vaccine safety information is proposed. Website owners are free to use this WHO resource. Once part of the network, members benefit from a facilitated access to continuously updated vaccine safety information and tips to improve their website credibility, content, accessibility and design. In 2015, a survey highlighted a growing desire from VSN members for visual identity that they can use as a signal of their membership to the VSN, given that they are not allowed to use the WHO logo for this purpose. The visual identity would be posted by members on their respective website in the same manner as the home code is used. Another important purpose of the visual, uh, VSN visual identity is, is to signal to visitors that the website meets the good information practices criteria. It is also promoting the VSN project. The VSN banners, uh, banner as illustrated in, in this slide uh, is hyperlinking to the VSN portal driving traffic to the portal and to the VSN member's website. We have seen that the primary uh, focus of the VSN is to continuously expand the network to facilitate the access to reliable information on vaccine safety. Another important item on the VSN agenda is research in the field of vaccine safety digital and information, uh, information and communication. So taking the opportunity of the members' commitment and willingness to work together, ideas on innovative research projects on a wide range of issues related to effective communication of vaccine safety information are emerging. To guide the scope of the research that would benefit the network, ideas will be assessed against the following criteria, innovation, relevance and applicability, and contribution to the VSN mission and goals. This is an example of a research project that is implemented at the moment, which Alberto will be, will be presenting in detail. Another important VSN tool is the VSN online portal that was launched in February 2017. Initiated to respond to the need expressed by the members to have a space for collaboration and exchange of information, the VSN portal also serves as a platform to increase the visibility of the network members and further disseminate information on the safety of vaccines to the public. The portal is organized in two sections, one section that features information aimed to wider public and increases the visibility of the network members, and a password protected area that features tools and spaces for communication and collaboration among the members. Mutual cross-linking between the VSN portal and VSN member website raises the visibility and ranking of both websites on the share search engine listing. More relevant links result in a higher ranking. Therefore, all members are encouraged to cross-link to each other and to the VSN portal. In particular, all members are invited to promote their content on the portal and the membership of the VSN. This search engine optimization has proven to be successful as the VSN is obtaining a high ranking placement in the search result pages on Google. When typing keywords vaccine safety, for example, the VSN is usually ranked in the top four results uh, and most of the members website are ranked first, second and third on Google search results. This is particularly rewarding and reassuring that trustworthy information on vaccine safety is ranked first on the search engines. After more than a decade of remote collaboration, VSN members met at WHO headquarters in Geneva in November 2016 to revisit the past decade of VSN, the network significance and potential for future as well as expectation from members, 
share views and experience from different websites, countries and regions, and discuss innovation in managing vaccine safety information and digital communication, and explore new frontiers in vaccine safety intelligence. The meeting was attended by 24 representatives of 22 websites, gathered in person, with five others joining by video conferences, as well as external guests. The meeting provided direction to the VSN Secretariat to fulfill its mission, and we are excited to announce that the next VSN meeting will take place here in June in Les Pensières. During this first face-to-face -face meeting, when we asked a VSN member why they wanted to be part of this network, these are the keywords that summarize their feedback. Global, commitment, expertise, technical know-how, ideas, leadership, community building and knowledge sharing, mutual promotion and increased visibility by cross-linking, opportunity for worldwide co coordination and collaboration on vaccine safety communication and information strategies, outreach, innovation, research, and mutual support. This is a heavy slide that I will not read, but it, it summarizes all the ongoing activity of the VSN. Who is behind the VSN? The VSN Secretariat, which is formed by a VSN coordinator and two members tasked at assisting uh, the implementation of the VSN project. The Secretariat support for the VSN is provided by WHO. The Secretariat is advised by a multidisciplinary group of experts tasked with guiding the network on strategic directions. It is composed of 11 members, including six VSN members, the chair of the GACs, and representatives from partner institutions. The advisory group holds regular teleconferences to discuss network activities and strategic direction and to try to meet once a year on the occasion of the VSN meeting. And finally, the VSN is only one of the numerous initiatives that are contributing to better communicate about the safety of vaccine. VSN members are eager to collaborate and hope for sharing of knowledge and intelligence with other stakeholders to preserving the immunization achievements and for the public good. Thank you. So this was the first part of VSN. I will go to uh, something more technical, maybe. Um, so, uh, yes. Okay. The idea is, uh, can we use data for a better communication in vaccine safety? And uh, actually, having the VSN as a network available for doing this uh, task, it, it was a very incredible opportunity. Uh, we have been working together with data scientists and understood a lot of things that uh, 10 years ago were not uh, apparent. And they came from studies on the network, on the, uh, on the web particularly. Uh, you may be familiar with these concepts. Uh, actually, if you debunk fake news about vaccines, you enhance polarization, which is a risk because actually you miss the mediation between two parties and you have very uh, uh, hard times in trying to uh, actually convince people that the, right, the scientific news are those that are credible. Um, and actually the dynamic of negative and alternative science news is completely different from real science. And you see beautiful papers from uh, scientific um, uh, entities like data scientists, again, that make experiments on the web, saying that if you try to post uh, uh, some information, uh, alternative science information, the dynamics is much better than if you post uh, real science, which is a problem because actually we are not uh, only left with the idea of providing good information, but we should understand which strate strategy is better for uh, making a real diffusion of all these things. Um, having said that, uh, we are not very familiar with the idea that communication must be based on data. So imagine that actually tomorrow you will see this magazine and see that, for example, there, there are rumors about problems and concerns about side effects of a new vaccine. How do you face this challenge and how do you try to uh, uh, 
uh, convince people that this is not the case because actually this is just fake news. It's not sufficient to provide them with some uh, scientific communication because people want to understand much, much more. But actually data might be helpful in understanding how to do that. So the idea behind the VSN analytics is uh, using the network, which is 55 or 56 website, as a single communication channel, all together doing the same things, coordinated, consistent, and trying to use data for a better communication on vaccine safety. Why we thought that? Because uh, the network is global, there are websites, and they're providing data. You know that every single website is collecting, uh, most of the times, web analytics. I don't know if you're familiar with these numbers, but web analytics are numbers saying what users, what visitors do on each website. So imagine to pull all them together and understanding how is the behavior, which is the behavior of these visitors and how they search for information on those websites, on these channels. So the other question is, how do we use this data? And the idea was putting together a group of different people with different profiles. And uh, we were lucky enough, because I work in a very strange hospital, but also in a very strange group, uh, of putting together uh, a group of people uh, of uh, not only with uh, competencies uh, in uh, epidemiology, but also in communication and other things. The idea was using data for addressing these questions. So is VSN reaching everybody? Uh, are information about vaccine safety consistent? Can we do campaigns all together? Can we try to tailor information to what people need? And uh, can we detect early signals? Which is a little bit uh, resonating with what we do uh, with uh, uh, actually signals of outbreaks, for example. But think about using the same concept in communication, which is completely new to my knowledge. So we, we, uh, we're lucky because actually uh, we have been discussing with WHO a lot of times, and they were convinced that it was worthwhile to start a project. And this is the VSN analytics. We uh, made a feasibility study for understanding if actually the VSN members were likely to participate in such endeavor, and uh, they said yes. Uh, we started making uh, a protocol, we started making a platform, and since uh, today or yesterday, we're ready with the very first report of what's going on. You can understand that these kind of things are completely uh, new and uh, uh, reports uh, differently from what happens with uh, epidemiological reports are completely uh, flexible and we understand what we need as we go on because it's more than a, as a playbook because we are starting with some information we test this information in the field we see if people uh, from BSN uh, require additional information and we go on developing new things and again this is made with a lot of people with different profiles this is uh, the uh, actually a snapshot of the competencies there are in my group and, and that's why I was saying that we are a strange group because it's not very common that in the same a group of people working on epidemiology and on vaccine safety and other things you have journalists or expert in digital marketing and other things but it is extremely useful because you have different points of view that uh, help us to develop new things and explore new frontiers that's the idea so far, we have uh, 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 we, we started with uh, uh, a fraction of the total members of VSN. Um, you understand that uh, gathering information from for the VSN analytics requires to insert some scripts into the websites for streaming the web analytics. Not all websites are. Uh, comfortable with that idea, so 50% uh, of them decided to uh, provide this information manually. But what we are going to do is first providing them with a set of information that is uh, briefly described in this slide. You can understand that information that we are going to provide is a mix between web analytics and epidemiology 
because we're trying to describe what's going on uh, about the geographic outreach, uh, about the popularity of, each, of, of the network and other things. But um, instead of doing this stuff by website, we're doing this by country, which is much different because actually our scope is trying to understand what's going on by country and if we need to reinforce some initiatives in specific geographic areas. That's the idea. So uh, the project provides an output, which is continuous feedback about the results. One of the uh, outputs is a web portal in which you have simple data showed up. And this is the very first uh, attempt to provide that uh, demo feedback. Uh, as I said, uh, um, participants can uh, provide their data manually which is uh, uh, a simple form with simple, simple, straightforward web analytics. One of the mm, critical things is understanding what people are searching for and which kind of topics they're interested in. So uh, one technical thing that we are uh, trying to address that is not extremely simple is trying to, combat, to make a matrix of terms. Remember that this is a, not a global network. So we need a, a, a matrix of terms, which is keywords by different languages. And keywords is not uh, uh, actually a single word, because you know, for example, pertussis is pertussis, whooping cough, just in English. What, what's happening in other languages, I don't know. But you can understand how complicated it might be, uh, uh, in, inclu including all the concepts uh, regarding a specific disease in this kind of approach. And this is about natural language processing, and that's why we need data scientists into the group to making this kind of stuff. Uh, so what we, going to, what we are going to do with this data, uh, since we have information about the behavior of uh, visitors, we try, with the help of uh, communication experts and journalists, to interpret this data and provide recommendation and see if specific settings and specific circumstances uh, are associated with data, which is actually something new. So to be more uh, specific about the idea that we have in mind for this project, look at this slide. Uh, we are collecting data about web analytics. This is the very first layer. You see the first one. But actually, we are in the position of adding other layers. In the very first reports, for example, we are integrating information from Google Trends, saying which are the most popular topics in Google search. We are integrating data about Google search. Are VSN websites ranked first, as was well saying Isa? We are trying to intercept also information coming from the news about vaccines. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Medicis, which is an aggregator, an aggregator of information from the, from the news. Think about integrating added information, which is more traditional, vaccine preventable disease incidents, coverage, and others. And think of looking at them all together and drill down at the same time when you have a problem, for example, a challenge, a critical issue, fake news uh, about MMR and autism or mercury or whatever. That's actually the idea. Not very easy to develop. We are exploring what is the association between this data and what's happening in the field, but this is the way we are, we are doing. And let me say also, that, let me tell you also, that uh, the, uh, putting together all these people in such a strange work was giving some side effects <laughs> because people in the network was very enthusiastic about doing something new and they're coming out with new ideas. So we are just uh, at our start, at the beginning. We have just provided them with the very first uh, uh, report and uh, I'm sure I will be um, trying to show you something. Uh, the report uh, will be a monthly one uh, uh, together with something that uh, will be provided uh, on the web, uh, as I uh, showed you before. But uh, you see, uh, instead of doing simple uh, text and numbers, we try to explain what's going on, uh, because actually having 
all together from uh, every place of the of the globe actually we can have a, a snapshot of what's going on uh, in a specific uh, point in time uh, and we can describe what's going on about the geographic outreach with some explanation about the user profiles uh, what's going on about the visitors behavior are they going to stay in the website or are they uh, going just uh, staying just for a few seconds and then uh, uh, go away. How many of the websites in VSN rank uh, in the first uh, Google search page? Are they popular, for example? And uh, other other things that are more numbers. With this information, we try to provide recommendation to them and discuss directly with them what is the best way to approach vaccine information. And I'm sure that I will be telling you something more in a couple of months because we just started and the website providing data are just a few right now. But in a couple of months, we will have a, uh, a, a actually we will be including a lot of data and uh, there will be a lot of interesting stuff to discuss. Thank you.